Howdy folks, it's all Turtle here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator for the final part. The conclusion of the Charles Lundberg Transatlantic Flight Mission in the uh, Spirit of St. Louis. Ryan something something, whatever it's called. <laughs> it's in the notes below. Anyway, so we are literally resuming from where the previous video ended. I'm recording this straight through just so we can try to get a sunset if we can. Because I'm not going to be able to fly the rest of this in one sitting. It's going to take me at least two different days in real life. Condensed into this one video. Which means when I restart the flight. Further down the road here. It's going to reset the time. And it's going to be morning again. So no nighttime flying unfortunately over the ocean. No storms or anything either. But that's just the logistics. Which I talked about in the previous video. Which I'm assuming a lot of you actually jumped right to this video. Probably. So I will repeat a few things, such as logistics. I don't have 33 plus hours to run the sim and do the fight all at once. And with my real life stuff, like full-time job and my side teaching, I'm, picked, I'm doing more piano teaching again on the side, which used to be my main gig, but now it's my side gig. I'm doing more of that. So between the two jobs, kids, spouse, you know, kids sports, holidays, all that stuff, I just don't have time to fly for 33 hours straight. In fact, I don't even have time to fly a little, let the sim sit, fly more, let the sim sit, fly more, let the sim sit. Because then it would be running on my computer for like two months. How long has it been since I started this? Mm, month ago? Not two months, a month ago maybe. Maybe just over a month. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I'm just enjoying it. So I couldn't let my computer sit for a month running the sim with updates and stuff like computer automatically restarts there's just no way so that's why we didn't get to see any night flying that's why the sun is going to reset in a little bit here when i have to go to a new real life day however for you it should all just be contiguous and no problem so back to where we are now those of you who jumped to this video um fuel we did refuel after newfoundland just because i was scared and i didn't want to refuel too late down the trip because then suddenly adding all that fuel could have stressed the aircraft and caused it to crash maybe so when we were down to 64 percent it actually started at 98 so when we were down to 60 66 percent sorry we refueled so if we land with 32 um percent or back to 30 percent because it refueled to 98 so if we land at 30 percent or better we would not have run out of fuel would not have needed to refuel if we land at less than 30 percent fuel then we would have run out of fuel. But I have a feeling we're going to make it. I have a feeling we didn't need to refuel. But that's okay, right? That just means we took the best, most efficient path over here if we land at 30% or better fuel. Okay, that's what that means. Um, again, I apologize for breaking this up in real life and not having the night experience and stuff. But what it would have been at night would have been keep an eye on the altitude so we don't accidentally run into the ocean. And keeping track of our heading. That's all it would have been. It wouldn't have been that exciting anyway. Um, except for maybe seeing these lights. But other than that, we didn't miss anything by not flying through the night. Why are we still climbing in altitude? I've been trimming down and bringing back power for like 20 minutes now. And we're still climbing. Anyway, there were some really weird updrafts in the ocean. I would be perfectly trimmed and everything then all of a sudden I'll get this updraft and go up like 1500 feet and that might be what we're experiencing now so you got to keep an eye on our speed we don't want to um, get into the yellow and stress the aircraft and crash otherwise let's see anything else I can tell you for those of you who skipped to this video we've been hand flying obviously there's no autopilot so we've been hand flying for 20 something hours maybe 25 26 28 hours 30 even I don't know I'm not really keeping track to be honest, um, that detail is not important to me. And navigation, you know, there's no autopilot, so and there's no GPS, so it's just um, use the heading. I've been being very, very careful with the heading, just because the maps used to do, right? When we were over the ocean, we had no reference. It was like this for like 20 hours or something, 18 hours. So map was useless, no GPS. So all I did was just kept a track of the heading best as I could and we ended up exactly spot on where we were supposed to so that was awesome now I'm using visual references like we're going to fly to this island and then we're going to go over um, to the left 
until I get to Plymouth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the coast on my left, yet gaining distance from it. And then as soon as um, Land's End, which would be here, but as soon as that peninsula with Land's End on the end renders in, then we'll know where Plymouth is. Um, there are headings in the nav log, but I'm just going to use Dead Reckoning and visualize where we are, stuff like that, just because that's more fun. Um, and I've been using heading now for 20 something hours. I'm just going to go like visual based on um, geological and, ge and geographical cues. Anyway, um, it's looking good. So there's your long intro to where we are and where we're at. For those of you who don't know where we're going, we're going to go to this island here, which I'm looking on Google Maps has a name probably. Cape Clear Island. That's where we're headed. And then we will um, drift to the east-southeast or so. And we're going to look for Plymouth, which I'll just pull up the map. So there's that island right there. Cape Clear Island. And then we're going to drift over to the left. Can I zoom out more? I can't. Tell PY, which is Plymouth. Um, we're not. I was going to go to Cork originally, which is here, but that's going to be backtracking because we're right here. Back room right here. So we're just going to go this way, drift this way until we see Land's End, which is L&D. There's Land's End, but we're going to Plymouth. Once you go to Plymouth, we're going to cross English Channel, which would be very easy. We've done this many times. We'll just be on that point, look for that point. Very simple. Follow the shore until we get to, I think it's La, La Hod. Let me see, let me get the real name off Google Maps here. That is called La H A R V E so La He La Har La I don't know. But that's where you enter the Seine River. That's what this is. And then once we enter the river, we're just gonna follow the river at a very low altitude until we get to Paris, Paris. and then the Eiffel Tower is, whoops, is literally on the river, it is, let me make sure I get the right um, curve, because there's several curves there, the Eiffel Tower is on this, whoops, watch where we're going, this curve right here, so follow the river at a very low altitude, circle the Eiffel Tower right here, and then go up to Peanut Butter, Lima, Foxtrot, Papa Bravo, which is how do you say that again? Um, it's not Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle is up here. It's the other one. Bourge, Le Bourget Airport? Hang on, let me find it. Um, what is it called? Airport de Paris de Bourget. Or something like that. Peanut butter. PB. That's where we're headed. So that is our flight plan. Pretty simple. I've mentioned that several times before in the other parts of the video. But like I said, I have a feeling a lot of you just skipped to this video. Um, so anyway, so we're going to be going over the islands and then heading over to Plymouth and then um, crossing the channel. So unless I think of anything to say, I'm just going to give you a couple minutes of sightseeing over the ocean here to Plymouth. And then you'll hear my voice at Plymouth before we cross the English Channel. If you sudden, suddenly see the sun end up in front of us, that means it's a new real life day for me. Um not going to be that big of a deal for you. We're just going from daylight to daylight. It's not going to be that much of a change. I'm just going to start coming down in altitude. We'll probably cross the water around 5,000 feet or so. Um, and then once we're crossing this channel, we'll really come down. So, like I said, unless I think of something, enjoy the sightseeing, and I'll see you in Plymouth.
All right, just jumping in here before we get to Plymouth because I'm I'm gonna have to sign off for my real life night. Of course, don't worry, the video is gonna continue for you, but for me, it's time for me to get to bed. Um, but I wanted to enjoy some of the sunset views with you before I force this thing to save and then wrap it up for my night. Again, not for you. The video has just begun for you, but um, looking at Land's End. Well, let me line this up here. Land's End. Um, it was there. Hang on. It's there, I promise. There it is. Land's End is right here, so Plymouth is over here. So we're kind of coming across. Uh, let me show you on the map here. I'm kind of coming across like this, right? So Land's End and then Plymouth. Because I really wanted to see if we could find Land's End. Um, so Land's End and then Plymouth. And then we'll follow this across the channel like this. We're actually going a pretty straight shot, even though it doesn't look totally straight. But it is as the crow flies for the most part. But here's the caveat. When I force this to save at 8,000 feet above sea level, just about to reach Land's End, we don't know where it's going to put us when I come back. So some of the time, um, like when we were in Rhode Island, it saved right there, Port Hardy or whatever. But then when we were in um, Newfoundland, it set us an hour to the north. And I had to like back, I had to like refly some of it. So it's very likely that I will end up back here in Finland, or Finland, in Ireland again. And having to fly over to England again, or it might put us way up here. And we have to fly back this way to get the. Um, where are we going? See, this way I have to go to bed. I'm so tired. It's um, 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 Plymouth. So I don't know. I just wanted to show you where we're at before I sign off for myself, and then there'll be a quick cut, and then you'll see where we ended up. So 8,000 feet above sea level. Sun is setting, it looks beautiful. Let's quickly use this view. Whoop, camera here. There we go, like that. And then give myself control of the airplane again. There we go. It's a little tilted though, the drone is tilted for some reason sometimes. Um, in fact, I don't like that. Let's go like that there. I don't like that either. See, it looks better with um, with this camera, even though the HUD's in the way. Because this is level, see. Anywho, so that's where we're at. We're about to reach Land's End. I'm not even going to fly all the way there before I sign off, just because it's going to put us somewhere else. You can see it out there. And then Plymouth is just over yonder. So, quick cut for you. New day for me. If I remember, I'm going to start recording as soon as I get back in the sim. Um, just so you'll, you'll see how the altitude changes. Our placement will change. So let's take a note of where we're placed. So whenever you load up the map, even though you're not on here, you're always in the middle. So, we're like this coming across. Um, so, we'll see where they put us when I sign back on. And our altitude when I sign back on. So, quick cut for you. A couple days for me. See you in just a second. Alright, as promised, I'm going to see where it sent us here. As I um, just started this sim again. Oh dear. Okay, so, okay, 1,400, 1,500 feet when I signed off at, was it 8,000 we signed off at a second to go? Obviously, if you haven't caught on, it's a different day in real life, but I just left you at 8,000 feet. Let's run this TA some thing again. Come on. And let's get our snack out, and let's figure out. Uh, get back in the air here. Whoa, careful with the trim. We don't want to, we don't want to, whoa, look at our airspeed. What the heck? Let's get some speed back. Barometer okay. Everything okay. All right, we'll climb again. Um, let's see where did it put us. Um, oh, that's not too bad. Remember, you're always in the middle, and we were right here, so it put us over here. Okay, that's not bad at all. Okay, good. I was worried it's going to put us back over Ireland, and we have to redo Ireland. So it set us back about 20 minutes. Not a huge deal. So, everything still stands heading to Plymouth and then across the channel and into France. Um, I'm sure I told you that the other day. Alright, cool. So, I'm going to resume. I'm going to get our altitude back up. Um, for the water part, I'm going to climb back up to like five, six, seven thousand 7,000 feet. But then we'll... Um, we well, we got to get our mixture back. Hang on. We're not getting very much power here. Let me reset a few things here. Um... Let me... There we go. Oh, wow. Mixture wants to come way back. See the RPMs down here climbing? I'm bringing the mixture back very slowly until those RPMs stop climbing, and then I'll push it back in a little bit. 
Okay, like that. Oh, oh boy, no, nope, come back this way. There we go, okay. Okay, good. So I'm going to resume where we were, or where you were a minute ago. For me, it was like three days ago, but wherever you were, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my altitude back so we can see land. And, um, oh, what time did it put it at? Um, 1 p.m. Okay, so it's not doing the 8.30 a.m. anymore. Now it's almost 1. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oh, let's open this back up. And let's turn the lights on, I guess. Those turned off, too. Those don't always turn off. Okay, we're not reaching land yet, but remember I talked about the engine sound bug earlier, how the engine in this airplane is always full blast no matter what, unless I turn my master to zero, even if I turn everything else to zero. Why does crank my master up to 100% and my engine is softer? <laughs> so, listen to all this sound. I'll turn it up. I'll, I turn it down for editing, but I'll turn it back up so hopefully you can hear my voice over the sound. But this is loud now, and this is softer, where before... You can barely hear this, and this blew my eardrums out. So that is really funny bug with the sound that I've only noticed in this airplane. But anyway, carry on. I'll see you when we get over the water, or over the land here. I just cannot believe how windy it is every time we've gotten over land on this entire mission, this entire trip. Every time there's land, it just blows us everywhere. Of course, that's normal and stuff, but it's just crazy. Um, I feel like it's exaggerated, but maybe not. Anyway, we're not making it very far. There's Land's End still right there. Um, of course, we're making it plenty far. It just feels like we're staying in one spot. It feels like... We're getting blown black backwards here. Like, it'd be kind of nice to know our ground speed. Um, because sometimes I feel like we're just staying still and the wind is blowing against us, but we're making some progress. It's just kind of hard to tell when we're getting blown all over the place. But, yeah, I'm trying to think of how long I've been flying yet. It's been an hour and a half, really? And I just now reaching land? Wow, our ground, ground speed must be really slow. But anyway, we'll get back over the water here shortly, and then Plymouth is right here, and then English Channel obviously in front of us. Um, I think I'm going to stay offshore a little bit just so that it's not so windy. So we'll just fly along the shore, and then as soon as we spot the other end of the channel, we'll aim for it. And then once you get to the river, we have no choice but to fly over, you know, fly over land because that's how we get to the airport. Finally on our way to Plymouth, which is right here where all the watery does is turn the watery. <laughs> the water does all of its stuff. That's Plymouth. That's where we're headed. And then 
the room over there is the other side of the English Channel. Um, I assume we'd be able to see it plenty fine at this altitude, but I don't know. When we get to here, the closest point is where we're going, so maybe when we get here we can see the other side. Otherwise, we'll leave at whatever the heading is indicated here. Let's see. Um, 98 degrees once we go past Plymouth. So, if we need to, we'll do that. But otherwise, continuing on towards Plymouth. Well, there goes Plymouth right here. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> We're, I guess I have more to say. Of course I have more to say. We're out a little bit from the water or from the shore just because I wanted to get away from the bumpiness. And then we just kind of drifted out here. And I'm like, you know what? After 30,000 hours over the water, we're kind of more at home at the water. But now what's my fear is landing this thing. I know we have like two hours to go, or so, two and a half hours, but um, my fear is landing this thing because I don't want to screw up and crash it. And I'm getting too tired to drive right now, but I'm driving anyway. There we go, there's a better view of Plymouth. And somewhere over here is land so this is the English Channel here and then um, somewhere over here is France somewhere we'll find it we don't have a choice we have to find it well England it was nice knowing ya um, it was short and sweet but we're on our way over the English Channel to France where we will find France and then go for another hour and then hit the river, and then go for another hour, and then find the Eiffel Tower, circle it a little bit, then find the airport, all without smacking into the ground, because it's going to get windy again. But, um, anywho, so just some orientation. There's Land's End over there above the tail. The peninsula, London would be way over there. You can see how the country curves around boom and then France is somewhere over here somewhere oh oh there you go just rendered just rendered in good so let's cross the channel and I'll see you when we get to the other side of the channel Alright, that is mainland France in front of us. Just want to point out a few things. We got the Channel Islands, Guernsey here, Jersey there, St. Anne here. And this is mainland France. It's the little peninsula in the northeast part of France. Northwest, sorry, northwest part of France. We're looking east, but northwest part of France curves around. But then the peninsula is here, and then France goes off that way. We're going to enter the river right about where the mouse pointer is. So we're going to turn back that way after I kind of <laughs> curve around for some reason. Drifted over. But anywho, it is well after midnight in real life. I have about two hours left. I'm going to go for it. And then hopefully not regret it in the morning. <laughs> because I can never sleep in. So I will be up at like 6 a.m. probably, like usual can't help it. Can we see England? Yep, we can still see England. So even though this is one of the wider parts of the channel, you can still see England quite easily from here. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
Anyways, that's the quick update for now. Enjoy the sightseeing as we cross over the peninsula, then back over the water, and then, like I said before, once we get to that river, there's going to be a lot more jibber-jabber from me because there'll be a lot going on. So enjoy the sightseeing and lack of my voice along the way, and I'll see you in a moment. And we've reached France. Oh, and there's the wind. I was going to say, I don't feel any wind yet, but there it is. There is the wind as we cross over the beaches of whatever you say. I can't, I'm going to try my French pronunciation. Um, there we go. We're over France, but then we'll be over the water again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the wind. There it is. Okay, so this is going to be a bumpy half an hour or so, probably. Oh boy, look at our altitude just climb. Um, yeah, as long as the wind isn't too strong, it stresses the aircraft and causes a crash. That's okay. Um, I'm just curious how we're going to fly over the river when it's this windy every time we go over land, but we'll figure it out. And again, as I edit this in the future... I kind of shake my head and face palm because I already know the answer, but as I fly, I don't know what the future brings. But again, I hope we land safely and I hope it counts it as 100%. Because it's been a long journey. Worth it, but long. Oh boy. Oh boy, it's really windy again. And that's Le Havre, 
or Havra, if you've seen something about Mary. Other than that, that's definitely our city. So, um, I don't see airport beacons yet, but that's our rear entrance right there. So that's where we're aiming for. We're about, gosh, how long do you think that's going to be? Half an hour, 20 minutes or so. And then the fun begins because we got to get lower to the ground. It's going to get windier. And we're going to follow the river into Paris, which is 100 miles. So that's another hour or so, <laughs> at least. And in the sim, that puts us, let's say, hour and a half. So 5, 15, 6, 15, 6, 45. Yeah, we could actually have a sunset behind us as we land. So that would be kind of cool and unplanned. We'll have to see, though. we we'll have to see where the future takes us here. There's a nice view out the back. I guess we have our... Head sticking out like a puppy dog. Not sure how that happened, but I'm not complaining. Um, our face is our own periscope, apparently. There's La Havre. Something like that. Ra, La Havre, Ra. And our river's in. Also remember that as long as we land with more than 30% fuel that means we did not need to refuel back in Newfoundland so it's going to be close, I'm just curious um, one of the many things I'm curious about <laughs> I'm also curious about the landing, I'm curious about accounting once we're done but yeah, so just the fuel reminder which I guess for you was earlier in this video but for me it was like days ago I talked about that fuel Right. If it's 30 or above, we did not need to refuel. If it's below 30, then we would have run out of fuel. You know, just stalling here, wasting time while I approach the river, enjoying the calm before the storm, I guess. Okay, we have entered the river, and it's time for the fun to begin. We're going to slow down, we're going to decrease our altitude a little bit. Not too much. Um, I want to be able to see the river, <laughs> not just fly along it, because it's so curvy, it'd be a waste of time to go up and down every bend and fold. So we're just going to stay at an altitude where we can see the river and kind of cut across all the curves. Well, I say goodbye to the ocean. Because, um, we're done with the ocean. <laughs> nice seeing you, nice knowing you for the past 30 some hours, but we're now inside France. And I never thought I'd be so excited to be inside France. But, um, that's where we are. So I can kind of see the river curve a little bit, but I can't see, like, the long distance of the river so we're just going to go with what we can see and follow it as best as we can with what we can see and um hopefully be done before too long here hopefully i won't be too blabby and too wordy because i don't want to add another hour to the video um, i'm sure it's long enough even edit it down but when you look at this we'll zoom out one more please when you look at this from here to here, this is our airport here, it doesn't look like that much, does it? But it is, it's 100 miles. So, we'll see how long it takes. Of course, our airspeed is not a good way to measure 100 miles because airspeed is in knots, and that's airspeed, not ground speed, and so on and so on. But we're just going to casually, loosely follow the river here. Um, you can see is it we get closer renders in more and more so curves this way curves that way um but then it kind of works its way back down this way so we're going to kind of stay in this direction what does it say it's at 114 degrees i think um yeah but that's pretty loose 
I'm not going to worry about adhering to that. We're just going to visually follow the river. So anyway, curve, curve. And then it goes curve, 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 curve over there to Paris. And then, of course, eventually we'll see, the, you know, the Paris skyline. But then that's not where the Eiffel Tower is. So we still have to stay by the river to find the Eiffel Tower. And be low enough that we can go around it. Not, like, lower than the top, but just low enough that we can safely go around it. And then find our airport from there. And then land safely. It's going to be a very, very, very long runway for us. So we don't need a smash down on the very end like a bush trip in the mountains. Um, this is a gorgeous view, isn't it? Wow. As we go to swoop down, try to figure out how high we are off the ground and just let it kind of bring itself to the ground. That's my plan. We do not have flaps or anything. So I don't think I can operate in the white. Since you don't have flaps, I'm not exactly sure, but we'll figure it out. And then um, hopefully it counts this trip and gives us 100% on the, the activities page. But anyway, um, I'm not going to talk this entire time because it would be an hour of me talking. So I'll just do sightseeing along the way. And once we can figure out where Paris is itself, I'll probably blab for that time. But enjoy coming to sightseeing and I'll see you in a little bit. This turbulence is so insane. I don't understand how we're supposed to land this thing when it comes time to land. Hopefully when we're lowered to the ground and we're not going so fast, the turbulence will settle down, but good grief. Anyway, if it's not already obvious, here's the sin, or sin. Oh, I guess there's the mouth right there. We haven't gotten very far, have we? Curving around, you hear my mouse clicking, sorry. But I decided, you know, turtle style, I decided to follow the road instead. <laughs> Just because I wanted to. I mean, we can see the river out to the left, so it's not like we're missing it or anything. But this turbulence is ridiculous. I don't understand it. We've lost 3,000 feet of altitude just from this turbulence. It's crazy. Um, but there's a river there. And then that means when this river comes down, just beyond it is a city called Rue, Rue, Rue? R O U E N, Rune, something like that. Looks like the autogen is making it look very reddish, so we'll have to check that out when we go by. Well, I want to get more sightseeing shots for y'all, but I can't get any because this plane is all over the freaking place. Like, I've almost given up fighting it, but every time I try to set up sightseeing, it just goes all crazy and I can't control it, so I have to jump back to this view to fly this thing. Even inside, it's just too crazy but there's your city Rune or Run over there on the left um, and then the road crosses the river a couple times and goes alongside the river all the way into Perry and um, oh, you can see traffic just rendered in on top of the satellite traffic that doesn't move that's pretty funny but anyway I wish I could get a better shot of that city for you I was trying to get over there but the wind was so bad I couldn't so here we are just gonna stay over here and I mean, I'm just letting the airplane fly itself at this point. I'm not even fighting it. This is too wild. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We're going to follow the river and the 
road into Paris. Man. It's going to be interesting to land this thing. Then I realized I should have practice landed before I started this long flight. <laughs> of course, if we crash, it'll like bring us back to the most recent checkpoint, but that could have been an hour away for all we know. Um, who knows? So we don't want to crash. And if we had not refueled, we would be down to 8% fuel. So I think it's a good thing we refueled back in Newfoundland. Which was like a month ago. <laughs> like li a literal month ago for me. Um, almost a month ago anyway. Alright, well the roads and everything turn to the south here. Through the river. So, like I said, I'll try to get some sightseeing shots for you. But I think the sightseeing is going to be like this. Where I talk through the sightseeing. Because it is so windy. That is beautiful right there. And for some reason the plane is relatively okay. But... Any second, it could just go crazy. Oh, look, you can see the ocean from here. Oh, see, there it goes. Oh, boy. Oh, there's your city of Rune again. Yep. Another town, which I don't know the name of, because my map is not where we are. So, anywho, let's keep going forward here. I think we're about, I don't know, are we almost halfway? Actually, let me see. How far are we here? We are, oh, that is the city called, what is that called? St. Aubin Les El Bouf. St. Aubin Les El Bouf. Or something. I don't know. I should not pretend. Yeah, we're about. Uh, we're about a third of the way. A third of the way. Okie dokie. Twice now, the sim has stalled on me for like seven seconds at a time, and seven seconds is like eternity in a moment like this. So, um, yeah, I better stop doing that because that was not fun. Um, whew. So, anyway, our altitude is back up to 4,000 because it pushed us up there, which is fine. It looked better at 3,500, but it's safer to be up here. We're making our way over to the river now because the highway kind of goes south of France, of Paris a little bit. And um, even though it hits the main loop, like if you think of like an enormous roundabout around Paris, um, it goes down there. But I don't want to lose sight of where the Eiffel Tower is based on the curves. Even though I guess A13 probably does run right into the Eiffel Tower, but... I don't want to worry about that. I just want to follow the river. So we're getting closer. Um, why is that not straight? There we go. It should be rendering in soon. I mean, this is the greater Paris area. So we have some of the north and northwestern parts of Paris rendering in now. Because this is the A13 here. And eventually it'll join and or split off. I can't tell with my tired eyes. With A14. Um, the A14 would take us right to the Eiffel Tower if I could follow it. A13 will go south. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say <laughs> about that. Otherwise, yeah, Northwest Paris is um, like the distant Northwest. So words I can't pronounce. Paris is still over here, but Northwest is up here. Um, and then I realized our two airports are kind of close together, Charles de Gaulle, which we're not going to, and then Beaujeu, or whatever it is, um, the peanut butter one, um, Le Beaujeu, Beaujeu, hopefully this is easier to tell from Charles de Gaulle, because Charles de Gaulle is going to be enormous, so hopefully we pick the right airport, 
Um, ooh, the smoke sack's really cool. But anywho, I'm trying to stay between 35 and 300 feet if I can. And I'll check in with you once there's more to, more to check in about. Okay, I'm suddenly freaking out that I'm going to totally blow it here. Um, I don't know why. The Eiffel Tower is a very obvious landmark. And, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm free. I'm literally, like, freaking out that I'm going to screw this up. Um, why am I suddenly freaking out about this? Um, where are you, Eiffel Tower? Whoa, this wind is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm totally freaking out that I have no idea what I'm doing all of a sudden. Isn't that weird? Like, why would I be freaking out all of a sudden that I have no idea what I'm doing? Of course I know what I'm doing. Um, man, panic, panic. Jeez, altitude. This wind is ridiculous. It's just really crazy. <laughs> like, this is just really crazy. I've been flying for how many hours over the past couple weeks on one trip. And the wind is insane. I've never um, landed this airplane before. Yeah, it's just all nuts is what it is. And 7% fuel having not refueled. There's Eiffel Tower. Whew, okay. I can relax. So there's Eiffel Tower there. We're going to go to that without hitting all these buildings. And we're going to go this way and find the airport. Okay, of course it'll render it much more beautifully by the time we get there. Okay, I can relax now. Since we're going to spend most of the remaining trip looking out the left window, I want to give the right side some love. South of France. Not south of France, south of Paris. South of France is a region. <laughs> there we go, south of Paris. Alright, let's um let's see if I don't screw this up, we can keep that like that. I'm probably gonna screw that up because I can go like this and then back like this. I'm probably gonna screw it up, but anyway. Here we go, Eiffel Tower is in my sights. It's just at it's like at like at eleven o'clock more or less. So keep an eye on that speed. Don't get into the yellow. And yeah, 7%, we totally would have had enough fuel. I did not need to refuel. That's okay. That's okay. I'm glad we did, or else I'd be biting my nails over that. Because if we refueled now, had I got nervous and be too heavy to land, we'd smash into the ground. So, crossing the river again. Up to see the downtown area. And then there's our Eiffel Tower right there. We should be able to maneuver around it without hitting those other buildings, of course. Although, I'm going to stay realistic, somewhat realistic altitude above it so we don't smack into it. That would not be fun. I think once we wrap around the Eiffel Tower, if we go back out to the river and then go north, it's like right there somewhere. I don't know. I just pointed to a bunch of spaces, a bunch of spots. Anywho, how are we doing? 2,000 feet. That's good enough for altitude. Speed, how speed? Getting getting towards the yellow so let's back off on throttle a little bit and then we'll look outside do we see the airport yet it should be right off of here oh huh, might have to climb to find the airport that's okay man oh man there's the Eiffel Tower coming in on the right um, there's our downtown let's do a speed check an altitude check we're good Come back here to this view. Oh man, this is so cool. Um, I would like to do the Eiffel Tower view from inside like this if we can. That would be nice. Let's just set up that shot like that. And then we'll come out here. Whoa. Um, where's the Eiffel Tower? Right here? That was weird. Like, my brain totally went kaput and I couldn't remember where, what, what I was doing. Look at that downtown, the modern area. That's so cool. That is so cool. But we have the Eiffel Tower in our sights. So let's bring back throttles. We're going really fast. Okay, my rear end is completely numb right now. I did try to stand up and, um, like, 
move a little, but it's kind of hard. Um, anywho, oh, is that the arc right there? That's cool. I didn't know there's like a trail leading up to it. Maybe that's just the angle. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. This is nerve wracking. We're definitely going to have to get some altitude after we go around the Eiffel Tower so we can find the airport and then try to land. I can't believe this is happening. Like, the fact we actually are doing this trip and the fact that we're almost done with it. It's just crazy to me. How's that looking? No Eiffel Tower. I don't want to move the camera. There's Eiffel Tower in the camera. But let's just make sure we're not going to hit that other building. Oh yeah, that's far away. Speed is good. Altitude is good. Okay, here we go. There's the arc. Just went under the front strut there. Okay, one more check before I get close to the Eiffel Tower. We're looking good. Bring the throttles back a little bit. I just can't see my speed from here, so... Um, one more quick check for speed. Oh, yeah, fine. All right, here we go. Let's go around the Eiffel Tower here. And, um... Maybe I can get a screenshot of this. Oh! Our destination. They gave us a waypoint for a destination. Super cool. There's Eiffel Tower. Maybe I can get a screenshot out of that. Um, in editing, maybe. But there we go. I can't believe it's telling us where to land. That's crazy. Alright, I don't think we're going anywhere, that other, anywhere near that other building, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe this worked. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, time to put that back. Time to put this back. Time to go to where it told us to go. I guess we can do a little bit of from the outside too, right? It's not as good as the drone view. Look at that. See, this is where I want to active pause and take out the drone and do this, but um... Oh gosh, do I dare? No, we're... No, I can't. If I get like a gust of wind, it'll smack us around. I can't. I wanted to, but that's just for people who watch the video because that's not going to be a screenshot. So there you go. Those of you who watched it, you get that little bonus. I'm trying to climb. I got full power trying to climb, and we cannot climb. Now we're climbing. That was weird. Okay, cool. It's telling us where to land. I cannot believe it. That's amazing. <laughs> I did not think it would tell us where to go. But I guess the wood get is in mission, right? And missions tell you that stuff. There's the arc right under the wheels. Oh, that was unexpected fun. Look at that. With the big roundabout. Okay, this is amazing. I'm just like getting lost in France. There's Eiffel Tower, obviously. Oh my word. What's that building, I wonder? Something important. Okay. Like something on the hill there. Okie dokie, so we do not have flaps, I don't think. If we have flaps, I wasn't able to find any. Um, gears down, obviously. We don't have a tail wheel, it's a skid plate. It's a skid thing, so. Um, let's see. Gears fixed, no flaps, it's just a matter of managing our speed. I don't think we can operate in the white. But we're going to have such a long runway, I can get down in the green and then hover. I don't know how we're going to see anything. Um, the periscope... I don't think it's going to help us land. So I was thinking we would use this view, and I would go like this, maybe? Like that? That's what I was thinking. I don't know. Or we could try and land you from the outside, too. Who knows? Alright, I'm just guessing on the run runway orientation based on what the um, map had when I looked at it much earlier. So we're just going to go like this. Oh my gosh, this is... I'm not as nervous as I thought I would be, but I'm still really nervous. I think having them tell us where to go helped a lot. Um, do we have two choices of runway? Which one is longer? Not that I need a long runway, but... Um, oh, there, now there's three, but it looks like... I don't know. We're just going to pick one. I'm not going to try to figure out the orientation. I'm just going to pick one here. Based on those flashing lights that we see. How does this look? That might work. I would like to land from the inside. It'd be kind of cheesy to land from the outside, but if we have to, we have to. We've come this far, I'm going to make sure we land. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. It's actually really difficult to land from the outside. Like, I don't know how high we are or anything. And of course, the wind is not as windy, thank goodness. But 
We are getting, yeah, yeah, we are. It's, we're getting blown around a lot. Okay, there's a runway. Okay, it's further away than I thought. And my eyes are so glazed over, I can't really see. I can't see that runway. I can tell there's one because there's flashing lights. But from the outside, this is really freaking difficult. Okay, this might work. Is this really going to work? This is kind of difficult to do. There's no pappy or anything. Oh, man. I just have to... What? No. Shoot, that screwed up my view, you stinker. There's no pappy, so I really don't know... Oh, I, I could click on the VFR map and get the airport elevation, I guess. Oh my gosh, this is so windy. How am I going to do this? It is, look at that crosswind. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Oh my word. And again, I don't know what the optimum speed is to land this thing. I've never landed it. My plan was to come in hot and just hover over the runway. But if we accidentally get too low because of the wind, it'll crash us. And look at this crosswind. Holy cow. This would be crazy for like a Cessna, or like not a Cessna, but like, you know, being able to see your airplane. This would be crazy. Um, I think we're going to go like this. Yeah, because I don't think that periscope's going to... Let's try the periscope, what's it look like? Yeah, that periscope's kind of... Well, is the periscope useless? Maybe not. I don't know, it just seems really weird to land from the outside. Um, but I can't tell how high we are, I can't tell where that train is. So, and we're going really fast, I think. So let's go like this. Holy cow. Well, again, editing this in the future, I know how this turns out, but... In the moment here, this is crazy. It's so windy, I have no idea how high we are. I've never landed this thing before. We don't want to land front heavy because we'll strike the prop, but we don't want to land on the back. It might cause it is a crash because there's not a wheel back there. And I don't know what the forgiveness is going to be. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't want to land from the outside. That seems so cheesy, but I can't see my speed or anything from the inside. Um. Ho, 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 ho. Well, this might be my very first exterior landing ever. Because again, I don't know my speed if I go inside. This crosswind, oh my gosh, the wind. This is freaking crazy town. This is crazy town. I'm just going to go like this. And just coast over the runway for a long time. For a very long time to let my speed bleed off. Um... Soften it out here, let ground effects help us. <sighs> my heart is hurting, it's beating so hard right now. Oh my gosh, the crosswind is insane. Oh well, oh, oh. Uh. Okay, brakes, do we have brakes? Oh no, we took off again, because we're going so freaking fast. No, oh. No, you got to be kidding me. Oh, we were going too fast. It was such a smooth touchdown, but we we're going too fast. So it took off again and then it stalled. How far away are they going to put us back? Okay, where are we right now? Um, We're in Paris. That's good. Oh. Is Eiffel Tower right behind us? It is. Okay, there's Eiffel Tower. That's great and everything. But we have two problems. One, I don't know where the airport is now. And two, I don't know where the airport is now. Um, so, how are we going to find this airport without help? Um, the thing, okay, so what can we do differently so we don't crash again? Well, the thing we can do differently is know what our speed is, right? Something isn't right here because I can't get any power at all. I can't climb or anything. I guess we are climbing, okay. <laughs> um, so let's see, where are we? 
Okay, there's the double thing here. Oh yeah, there's that stadium again. Okay, and then the airport was up here. Okay, so what can I do differently now? I just need to know my speed, right? We had the smoothest silk touchdown, but then because um, of our speed, when I pulled back to keep the prop from striking, when I used the brakes, um, it ended up taking off again and then stalled because we were going too fast. So I should have, I should have rolled it out, I guess, before pulling back to prevent the prop from striking, but... Okay, I don't know where the airport is. Um, uh, what did we do? So here's this stadium thing. That's this here. So the airport is over here. So we got, okay, that's right. The stadium is right here. Come up. Airport is over here somewhere. Man, at least we didn't have to go back. I was... When that I had to go through another loading screen, and I thought for sure it was going to send me back to New York, and I was getting ready to throw up. I'm not exaggerating. Um, I don't know where the freaking airport is. Okay, so we went over the stadium, and now the river's curving to the left. Okay, so the river's curving to the left. Now the air, okay, so airport's up. Oh my gosh, the what the heck wind? Okay, so river's curving to the left. This river here is this river here, so the airport is up and to the right. Oh my gosh, I have full right early on and I can't go straight. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, so how can we do this differently? I, mean, I already asked this, but we... Okay, so what happened before, I had a perfectly smooth touchdown, but because we were going so fast... When I pulled back to keep the prop from striking, it took off again and stalled. So I need to just touch down much slower. Like to stay above the runway until it touches itself down. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah cause we don't have flaps or anything, so I don't think we have flaps, do we? No, we don't have flaps or anything. No. Um, this wind is insane. So let's set up our view again. Although I might try it from the outside this time. Because what happened was I wasn't able to see my speed. So I didn't know. So I think what I'll do... I really don't want to land from the outside because that seems kind of cheesy. But, I mean, the periscope doesn't do any good. Okay, so I need to stay above the runway until we stall. And then let ground effects soften us. And then... Pull back. Don't even hit the brakes, actually. You just slow down. Don't even hit the brakes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not freaking out as much because I know they'll send us back to the Eiffel Tower, but I don't want to have to do this a bunch of times, right? I just want to be able to land and... But I'm serious. When I got the loading screen and it took such a long time to load, I was getting ready to throw up. I was going to get ready to puke and then crawl into bed and my wife would be like, hi. I'd be like, yeah, I crashed and it didn't count. Oh, man. I would have been so bummed. I probably wouldn't have done flight some later for a year. <laughs> so I don't really want to land from the outside because I can't really tell my angle of attack. You know what I mean? But I need to know my speed. So what if we do a combination of this... And this, you know what I mean? Um, again, there's no flaps that I'm aware of. Why would there be? Oh gosh, this wind is so freaking crazy. Okay, we're going... Hang on, I don't want to even go to the white arc yet until we have a place to land. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is actually isn't so bad from the outside. Um, I guess if we have to land from the outside, we do. Okay, here we go. I can't tell where I am, though. I can't tell anything. Nope. Okay, we have a shadow, so that we're going to use the shadow. There we go. There we go. Use the shadow. Nope. Ground effect. Look at these ground effects. Oh, wait. Okay, so we could use the arc. Because that arc 
we were still flying in the arc. Okay. I'm so scared to use the brakes right now. Pumping the brakes like you're on ice. Yoke goes all the way back. I am just playing it as safe as possible here. I hope it counts. Oh my gosh, the wind is so bad that we're speeding up. <laughs> okay, there's the save icon. The wind is so bad we were speeding up. Okay. Ah, holding the brake. Oh, yes. Okay, six minutes. <laughs> okay, I feel really lame that we landed from the outside, but you know what? Screw it. <laughs> I don't care. I love that it said six minutes. So I'm guessing it took me about 35 to 40 hours. I really don't know. But let's just see if it says 100% on the activity screen. All right, ready? Let's click on it. And 100% completed. Yay. Okay, I'm glad that's on top. Because every time I load the screen, now I get to see that. Oh, I'm so... That was so fun. That was so worth it. I don't think I'd be able to do it again. Like, if it didn't work out for some reason, like if it sent me back to New York before crashing, I don't think I would have redone it. But, oh, man. That was super cool. Okay, well, I feel lame that I crashed, but at least it let us go back to the Eiffel Tower. Um, considering I never landed that thing before, right? But I'm not going to be hard on myself at all. I've never landed that before. And I've never landed from the outside. First time for everything. But hey, you do what you got to do. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe so you know what I plan to do next. Because I have no idea what I'm going to do next. I'll see you then.